Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, we're going over how to shield your guitar. If you have single coil pickups or just a noisy guitar, you can often reduce all that noise just by shielding your pick guard and the cavity on your guitar. So in this video, we're going over the tips and tricks on how to do that easily. Let's just go ahead and get into it. This pick guard already has some shielding on it. All right, I'm just gonna be a little more thorough and cover the whole pick guard. I've got my copper shielded tape that has conductive adhesive. So that means the underside is conductive so I don't have to fold the copper paper over to make a connection. It can just be connected through the ad adhesive. I can overlap a tiny bit. What I like to do is I learned this from my, my friend Mike, Mike Adams, most notably no, or known as Pusheen on the internet, the jazz master dude. So what I'll do is I'll put a section of tape down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the edge here to create an outline of the, the spots that I need to cut around so I can make a nice tight fitting piece that will then go on the guard. So there you go, you can kind of see that. There's a little bit of like an indent right here which I will now take my scissors and just cut just shy of that line. So we've got a nice tight fit when we go to put the shielding down on the pick guard. Now we're gonna go back and cut out the pickup routes. This tape is incredibly fragile and it will bend if you look at it incorrectly. <laughs> so we've got a pretty decent cutout right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stick it on. I'm not gonna cut out these holes for the post yet. This is the most difficult part is peeling off the the backing to the copper tape. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take this and just start peeling it away because if you do that you're going to create a crease and a curve in the copper tape. We want to do our best to keep the copper tape straight and actually take the back off. You can see it's already wanting to bend a little bit. Now, saying it is a lot easier than actually doing it. To, ah, right there at the end, I messed up. That's what you get if you do it the wrong way. But yeah, I've, I found that it's kind of easy to pinch, pinch the, the paper down with one finger, uh, uh, the copper side down to the table, and that way you can keep it firmly on the surface. Okay, so right here, I'm just loosely doing this because the next thing is you should definitely have a rag of some sort. This is going to come in very handy because this copper tape is really sharp on the side. If you do this with your finger, you're gonna get tiny little scratches and it is not pleasant. So I like to take a cloth, this is a microfiber cloth like you'd find in a pair of glasses or something, and just press down on the, the copper tape to where you're seating it all on the pick guard right here. So it'll give you a nice, it'll give you a nice visual of where you need to cut out the holes for the posts. Okay, so I've got a, a razor blade knife here that sometimes I use this, sometimes it's not even necessary. Uh, on these, these holes right here for the posts, let me put that down. These holes right here for the posts, I like to use the razor blade knife. And if I have any excess over the side on the route here for the pickups, just because it's pretty easy to carve away the shape of that hole pretty easily with the razor blade. Then once you're done, you've got a pretty nice razor blade cut hole. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as you don't have, you know, you definitely don't want to mar the, the guard up. So just be mindful of the edge of the guard. I say it's easy kind of, but it's not really all that easy sometimes. So you can see right here, I've got a little bit of a overhang there that came off. That's not ideal, but it's not gonna be that big of an issue. We have a couple screw holes where the pick guard sits into the body. What I like to do is take something like a tiny screwdriver here and just poke the holes. That's it. So we're gonna take another piece. Let's do this piece right here. I'm gonna cut that piece. 
we're gonna cover from here up to here. And we're gonna overhang this on the pickup cavity right there. Again, I'm going to press my finger into the edges here. Whoops. Making sure to not move the shielding tape to get the outline there. This time, I'm actually going to cut out this line right here in this piece because I'm going to go back and use my razor blade knife for this and these two. So I'm just gonna cut that upper edge there. That's looking good. And now we're going to peel this back. I've got it started. This is what I like to do. So I like to put my finger on the very edge and hold it down against the table like that. And then slowly peel up, uh, peel up that back. With my finger, I'm just loosely placing it because I'm gonna go back over it with this cloth because I don't want any scratches on my fingers. And trust me, it will scratch you. Albeit tiny, unassuming, if you will, but very sharp and it will cut you. So I definitely recommend you have to have a cloth. I'm gonna take a razor blade. This is pretty easy. Just cut down straight there and then coming in here around that corner a little bit and then up here same same thing though like I just I just run my razor blade along the side the side of that that cutout right here and it makes a it's a pretty easy stencil to use to get a nice clean cut there we go and now this section down here is now connected to this section the reason that I am taking the time to make all the guard shielded is because I want to have what's called a Faraday cage. It's essentially like a ground cage around everything. But what I want to do is I just want to have as much sound protection as possible. And that means you connect every ground to itself. So right here would be connected to all the way up here, which would be connected to the other side, the body part. Um, what I'm doing is essentially making this, this one continuous ground instead of two separate grounds. Does it make a huge difference? Probably not, honestly, but I just like doing it. Again, it's kind of fun for me, and I've got this whole roll of copper tape that I need to use, and I thought it would be cool to share because it is, it can make a huge difference on some guitars, especially jazz masters, because there's a lot of wire in these types of guitars. Any protection against ground hum or, you know, single coil hum is definitely welcome. This one's gonna be pretty easy. I don't necessarily need to go all the way to the edge here. I think that that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this one down straight. I'm gonna pinch with this finger right here and this finger and try to keep them down on the table so I can peel back the backing, the stiffer part. Well, as you go on, you get a little bit better at it each time. Just gonna line that up with the top of the pickup cut out right there. Again, gently with your finger, you can, but I always recommend in order to really set it into the pit guard, cloth on top of your finger and then go at it. I'm harping on this because the first time I put shielding tape in a pick or in a guitar, I had a lot of cuts on my fingers and it was not fun. I think this is good. This makes a continuous ground from the bottom guard, bottom of the guard to the top of the guard. And in here, the pickups are going to be grounded to the body, which will then also be grounded to the pick guard with a little overhang. So yeah, I think we're good. This Squire Classic Vibe Jazzmaster has shielding paint directly from the factory, which means the whole cavity is covered in shielding paint. But what we need to do is connect this ground with our newly shielded pick guard. That's gonna create that, you know, encapsulating like the ground cage, the Faraday cage. And it's pretty simple to do. What I'm gonna do is pick this spot right here, put a little bit of shielding tape on it, curve it up over to the top of the body right here. So this connects with this part of the pick guard. And that will give, that will give the ground connection from the body to the pick guard. So I'm gonna pick a spot 
on the pick guard where it is, you know, it's connected right here is probably a good spot. And then I'm gonna go from there. What I wanna do to make sure that this connects up here, there's a little bit of shielding cut out right here. So all I wanna do is same thing that we did on everything else. I'm just gonna cover this up because I want this to for sure be connected to the body ground, the cavity ground. Placed it loosely, come back with our cloth. And then we will now, we're gonna stick it from here to about here. I will also round it over just so it's not going to come outside of the pick guard. So what we end up with a piece like this, which is gonna sit right in here. Cloth again. Now the way that we test this, let me zoom out here. The way that we test the continuity of this shielded ground, the shielding paint to this piece of ground that we're going to then attach to the pick guard when it sits like that is with a multimeter. Put it on the continuity setting or the beep setting. It's got a little loudspeaker on it right here. What this does when it senses it's con continuous, it's gonna beep. That's going to let us test. So we're gonna put our one test probe right here, other test probe down here. Now see this paint isn't okay so here we have another problem uh there we go okay so if we focus in here right here we're putting our, our probe on the top and then we're testing the continuity of the bottom so we're testing the continuity from the top of the tape to the bottom now if we put the t the one probe on the tape and then we should be getting a continuous, so if we put one probe on the tape up here and then touch somewhere like down here, we should be hearing the beep, but we're not hearing that, which means this video just got a little bit longer because we're gonna have to shield the inside of this cavity and connect all of these different cavities together. What I meant to do was just show you how to shield the back of a pick guard easily. What that turned into was me finding out that my Jazz Master body here is not conductive across all of these cavities, which means this video is now longer <laughs> and I get to share this cool process of actually shielding a body with you. So let's go ahead, dive right in. It's gonna be the exact same process as the pick guard with just a little modification because we have to do these sides of the cavities as well. So first I'm going to, again, I dented in this little section right here. What I'm gonna do is cut along the line as, as close to the line as I can this time. So now we've got something that looks like this, which kind of fits down in there. The goal is to get something that will lay on the ground of this cavity pretty easily. And we're just going to try to place it in there as best we can, loosely thinning it in on the floor of the cavity with my finger. I don't want to go all the way around it and, and press it all the way down without this cloth, as we've been talking about before. So this cloth does a couple things in this instance. Um, one, it protects your fingers, but two, it is, you know, it's got some resistance to it. So it's going to brush over these these rough spots in the bottom of the cavities and really get our copper tape to have a good snug fit to the body. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. I'm going to do this section of the cavity now and then we'll come back and I'll show you a close up. So right in here, we have the bottom of the cavity is shielded all the way across here. And what this does is it creates a noise barrier, essentially. So this black paint should be conductive and cohesive across all of these different cavities. But what I was finding is that if I stuck my multimeter here and then over here, 
it wouldn't make the connection. So what I'm having to do is replace, we'll cover over this black paint with this copper shield to make this shielding. Now that we have all the bottom of the cavities shielded, now what we have to do is we have to guide our tape, put it up sideways, guide it along this side right here, and tape up all the sides of the cavities. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the pickup cavities right here because they're shorter, they're skinnier. For this section, you have to be a little bit careful because you know we have to bridge the side with the bottom. So we kind of have to overlap the bottom and the side. Let's just go ahead and jump in here. Now I think I might have cut off a little bit more than I could handle, <laughs> uh, meaning the length of this piece of tape might be a little bit much. I think it would be easier if I took it in shorter increments. Now I'm taking my cloth, of course. Always the cloth. You know, if you want to learn more, or if you want to check out the shielding copper, or the shielding tape, if you want to check out the shielding tape, I'll of course leave a link in the description below. It's really affordable, it's from Amazon. I'm gonna make a tiny little sliver. If you see me making slivers in the shielding tape, it's just to give it some slack so it can kind of bend around the curves easier at least. Sometimes I will go in and trim it right at the top of the cavity. Other times, like over here, I will let the, the shielding tape go over the cavity to overflow to make that connection with the pick card. There's no real rule how many times or how many connection points you need to have between the cavities and the pick guard. I just kind of space them out. You know, like one's up here, there's a lot right here. Some right there, I'll probably do it right here too. As I'm going, sometimes I like to dry fit the pick guard to make sure I'm not having any overspill or like overflow of the shielding outside of the pick guard because we don't want that. Just when you're doing the sides here, it's difficult for a few reasons because the cavities are pretty narrow that we're working with on these Jazz Masters. Um, but also, we just really need to be careful to connect the sides of the cavity with the bottom, the base of the cavity. Oh, that's looking pretty good. If you hear a bang in the background, that is Rory playing with his food toy. Another difficult thing is this ground wire. Sometimes it's helpful to just pull it all the way out into the cavity, the vibrato cavity, and then pull it back through once you're done. But that's, I didn't go that route this time. Okay. Oh, this is looking good. This is looking good, feeling good. Oh, I think we got a solid fit there. Yup, for sure, 100%. So now I'm just gonna mark out where this the wire comes in okay so now we have all of our copper shielding tape in the cavities i've gone ahead and mounted the pickups but what we need to do is we need to test to make sure all these grounds are continuous uh, so again we've got our multimeter set to the beep mode which means it's going to beep whenever i touch it together whenever it finds continuity. So if I touch a spot like, let's say right here, all the way over here, wherever I touch on this, it's going to beep because we have full ground connection. We have full continuity across all of this copper shielding tape, which is fantastic. That's what we should have had with the copper shielding paint, but I was not getting it. So again, that's why I shielded everything with this copper shielding tape inside the body. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Check out all the other gear demos and instructional videos that I have here. And if you wanna follow me on a daily basis and interact with me a little bit more, you can always head on over to Instagram 
and follow me at Eric Merrill. One more time, I wanna send a huge thank you to these folks right over here who are my executive producers for my Patreon page. I cannot, uh, cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I will see you in the next video.